For more on Saudi Arabia's win over Argentina, we can speak to the South American football expert Tim Vickery. A good afternoon to you, Tim. Good to speak to you. So in your eyes, we were just hearing from Carve. Is this the biggest World Cup shock ever, do you think? I think USA against England in 1950 probably trumps it. But it's right up there with one of the all-time great World Cup results. Think about it. Argentina, very, very close to breaking the all-time record for number of games unbeaten, 36 games unbeaten. And Asia getting off to a dreadful start in the World Cup. When Argentina hauled its, uh, it, itself out of bed for an early kickoff, 7 o'clock in the morning in Argentina, no one was expecting this result. And uh, But I think you have to say, over the balance of play, and, and, and this is what makes it such a, such a great occasion, it ended up being deserved. This isn't one of those fluke underdog wins. This is a win where an underdog played with enormous courage, not hanging on and hoping, but deciding to be proactive to give Argentina problems, to mark Argentina high up the field. Tremendous risks in this. Three goals for Argentina chalked off for offside in the first half, one of them very, very narrowly. But the flip side of that was that Saudi Arabia were able to disrupt Argentina's circuit of passing, get in amongst them, cause them some problems, and then win the game early in the second half. One of the all-time great World Cup results. Yeah, certainly was. Great to watch. Um, do you think that's what went wrong for them, is that they were disrupted too much, do you think, by the Saudis? Yes, uh, I don't think they responded well to the problem that the Saudis posed for them. Um, all of this long unbeaten run has been based on a passing game, on a game of association. Saudis tried to stop them doing that, and Argentina resorted to going long, looking for the long ball over the top, and they ended up losing their essence, their own character. And I think there was a worry in Argentina, you know, that things had almost been going too well. Uh, they knew that Italy had a long, long unbeaten run and not at the World Cup, and that Algeria had a long, long unbeaten run and not at the World Cup. So there was a fear in Argentina that it was going to go wrong when it mattered most, although I don't think anyone imagined it going wrong today. But under scoreboard pressure, and they haven't been under scoreboard pressure for a long time, in the second half, when they were chasing the game, they collapsed a little bit. Um, there, was, uh, there was an up and under and there was an attempt and there were balls flying around the box. But they didn't look like the structured Argentina team, the team that has passed the ball so patiently and has accumulated these 36 games unbeaten. Why? Because Saudi Arabia stopped them playing the game that they wanted to play. All of the merits are to Saudi Arabia. How will they react? You know what Lina Scaloni is like. Will he stay calm after this? Yes, I think he will. Okay. Um, he'll also remember, uh, he, was, he was very young at the time, but he'll remember 1990, the last time Argentina lost a World Cup opening game. That was a similar shock. They lost to Cameroon. What happened that year? They ended up going all the way to the final. So uh, th th he won't be pushing the panic button, although he does have some big decisions to make about the structure of his team for the next game against Mexico. Um, but what it means now is that we've got tremendous drama in the group stage of the World Cup. If Argentina are going to go all the way, then every game for them now becomes a final. Yeah, absolutely, because I was looking to, towards that Mexico-Poland game earlier on. I was thinking, oh, this will be a kind of a, a straight bid for who gets second place, but not so now in that group. Look, in terms of how the press will react back home for Argentina, I mean, I can imagine the headlines if this was England uh, doing this in their opening game. So what will, how will they react, do you think? Well, remember that uh, all of this happened before 9 o'clock in the morning, Buenos Aires time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there'll be very, some very disgruntled people taking their breakfast in Buenos Aires. The mood, I think, is eased a little bit by the fact that last year, finally, Argentina won a senior title when they won the Copa America. That was their first senior title since 1993. So that, that's taken some of the weight off. And Scaloni was saying yesterday that it's not the end of the world if we don't win the World Cup. We have no obligation to win the World Cup. And if we don't, the sun will still rise the next day. So he was trying to take the pressure off right from the start. Maybe now is the time to put the pressure back on. Yeah, I've never heard a manager say that and be so pragmatic so early on. But look, if we, if we look back to 1990, despite the loss to Cameroon, they did reach the final. So do you feel that will give them something to, to, you know, sort of pin their hopes on? Like you said, they're not going to panic and worry about this, are they, particularly? No, but uh, the way that the Saudis played surely gives hopes to Argentina's future opponents. 
Mexico, Poland, and anyone who may come along after that, um, because uh, it was it was so striking. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but the Club World Cup at the start of the year, Al Hilal of Saudi Arabia, the Asian champions, they gave Chelsea a really tough game. Chelsea were extended in that game. And if you look at the Saudi Arabia side, it is drawn, many of it drawn from that Al Hilal side. So that club understanding and the confidence of having played well against Chelsea, I think, stood uh, Saudi, Saudi Arabia in very good stead. And let's see if Mexico and Poland will be similarly brave. If you sit back and sit deep against this Argentina side, they will have the ball and they will pass. You might have the counterattack, but they will have the rhythm of the game. That's the thing that Saudi Arabia never really let them have. They never let Argentina get the game into the rhythm that Argentina want. Let's see if Argentina's future opponents have observed and have learned the lessons. Tim, just before you go, I just want to ask your thoughts on this, the extra time, extra time, extra time that we're seeing. I mean, what is going on? There's a lot of minutes to be played in the, this World Cup, yeah. it appears. Yeah, FIFA have obviously decided that they're going to make they're going to use this World Cup to make a stand on this issue. I worry about this. I worry about a lot of strain being placed on the players. I did a podcast last year with the, the former referee Mark Clatterberg, and he was talking about the the Champions League final that he did a few years back between Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, and he was saying it went into extra time, and in extra time he couldn't even see straight. You know, he was so tired. Uh, so you, you're talking about twenty minutes. Sometimes 15, 20 minutes being added on to the 90. Look at the state in which some of those uh, Wales USA players finish the game. This is a very truncated, condensed tournament. You accumulate that and then you add in the knockout stages where we could be going to extra time. Uh, and uh, I, th I think where we may well be asking too much of the players. I I'm aware that there are aspects of time wasting that need to be, you need to get a grip on them, especially the way that the goalkeepers abuse their privilege. But uh, I, I worry that we might be making too many demands on the players, especially in hot conditions. You make a really good point. Thank you very much for joining us, Tim, as always. My pleasure. Thank you.